This is the Balanced Growth Show with Dr. Travis Perry, helping successful business professionals like you achieve balance in their lives. Welcome to another episode of the Balanced Advisor Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Travis Perry. Today we have with us Tanya Nichols. Tanya is the founder and president of Align Financial, and she's a CFP. Um, she spent over 20 years helping women retire to a life they love. Her firm specializes in serving women-led households as they make decisions about the few years leading up to and after retirement. Tanya, welcome to the show. Thanks, Travis. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So tell us a little about how you got to the chair that you're sitting in now as the founder of, of your firm and why you want to help women. Uh, so I always giggle when I see these bios, like if I think about over the last 25 years, how the, this has changed, um, for whatever organization or whatever business I've worked for, cause I've worked for quite a few, I actually started, uh, as a registered investment assistant at Piper Jaffray in 1999, I was 18 years old. And so I worked for stockbrokers back then in the back office and I was an assistant and then eventually I found my way to become an advisor and I was working in the bank channels. And uh, I didn't know, I didn't even know what a stock was when I started at Piper Jaffray in the late nineties. Um, we, I didn't come from a family that had resources in that way. So just like, I really just needed a job and a paycheck. And so I worked there through college and then found my way to us bank, worked in the bank channels and uh, speaking of balance, if anybody that is listening has ever worked in some of those banks and wirehouses, it is like crazy. I mean, you, I mean, you worked, you just worked all the time, but it was a great place to learn the business. I learned a lot about what I didn't want to do and a lot about what I did want to do. And so I found my way through a couple banks and a couple wirehouses and back I guess it's maybe eight years ago now, I moved to an independent office and uh, tried a partnership and uh, happy to say that failed, like just famously. And uh, that led me to being on my own in the independent office. And then just a few years ago, I finally got brave enough to open my own office, Align Financial. And that's really when I started to uh, niche towards women and just get honest with myself that this is the space that I want to live in. These are the people who I do my best work with. And once you are honest about that, it's like, you know, what do they say? You create uh, the relationships you seek or something like that. So, uh, and that I did some coaching at the time and that really helped through the limitless program really helped me get brave enough. Cause I saw all these other amazing people doing stuff like that. And, and that was in 2018. So I've been, uh, just me and my right hand Cooper, and we've got a couple contractors that work for us and we serve about 80 women, mostly women led households. Uh, we've got a few awesome men in the mix, so I'm not, you know, we do serve some men, but generally the clients that find us are, are women who want a partner, like a thinking partner or sounding, I don't know how you say that, like a, a sounding board to think through major financial decisions. So that's a little bit about where I'm at today. I'm a middle-aged hockey mom of two teenagers. One just finished driver's ed and, uh, I've got five summers left. And so that's why, you know, that's why I'm here talking to a guy like you. Yeah. I want to make no. those count. I love this. Um, you know, things that struck me in our kind of our pre-show is that you're focused on balance, being there for your family, being there for your kids and really being all in. Um, but also, you know, noticing that you have a niche, a niche that most advisors that I talk to struggle with identifying. Um, who they want to, because they think that if I identify a niche, I'm going to alienate everyone else and I have to say no to everyone else, which is not true. You're creating a niche of someone that you know you want to help an ideal client, but you can make exceptions like you even mentioned. Hey, you help men, there's men in the mix, and that's fantastic. Um, but you're the you're the master of your destiny, right? <laughs> and what I've found is as I've niched to help financial advisors with this very specific issue, you know, um, it, it really the business comes because 
we've we've niched and we've focused. So that will happen to advisors who want to grow and keep their balance. Um, you have a unique position where you're um, you know, a single mom with children and you're wanting to be there with them so much, yet you're running your business as well. So tell us how you think about balance. What's your definition, analogy, way of, of thought towards balance? Uh, I think of you know, the first thing that's coming to my mind is choice. That it seems to me that my definition of ba- feeling balanced or living a balanced life is I have choices. And like when I was in my old way of doing things, it was like living on autopilot. There's a pile and you just got to get through the pile, but the pile never ends, right? The stack of work never ends. And so to me, uh, and that's not, there's no choices in that. You're just autopilot. You're like, you're driving the kid to wherever you're making the appointment at the vet. You're calling the client back to talk about the breath conversion. You're just mindless. So balance today feels like choices that every action that I take is an intentional choice. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Love that. Yeah. I mean, it's, being proactive, right? It's that coveyism of stepping forward, being proactive about every day and, and your life, um, and having that really that opportunity to make those choices. So, as an advisor who uh, is growing and you're helping women in this demographic, you've got this niche defined. Um, how have you been able to scale and grow your business? while keeping that sense of balance. Cause that's, I mean, that, that's huge. Like that became very apparent. When we were talking that, no, this is, I got five summers. This is where I need to be. So how are you able to balance and grow? Cooper. <laughs> no, I'm teasing, but really, I mean, having a great team is so critical. And I would say if you met me, you know, five years ago, well, shoot, who am I kidding? If you met me now, you would say, I, that I'm the stereotypical sort of control freak to some degree. But uh, I realized when I brought Cooper on, because that was in 2018, I, I left the office. I uh, launched my brand. I just finished my website and I did an entire office build out. And I also abruptly, unfortunately, had to get divorced. And all, so I became a single mom. It, in that same time period. And so there was these forced decisions, or I felt like I was forced into a bunch of decisions. And I honestly could not do my life if I didn't have help. And so that's when I hired Cooper. And so my, my idea behind hiring him, um, it was super scary. So the idea that I would have somebody that I could trust to help take care of my client relationships when I really hadn't had a right hand like that. I had people that did client paperwork and were nice to clients and things like that, but I just didn't really have something like that. So Cooper, my goal was to let him be responsible for things and to let him create his role. And so together we just let that develop. And, you know, I, I joke, jokingly say he runs my business in my life, but today he really, he really does. He runs my business in my life. And that was a part of me becoming who I needed to become to be able to let go of things and him becoming who he needed to become to take on a massive amount of responsibility. And I'd say that that has been a real, that's been one of the most important changes. That's how I've scaled is I've added Cooper and let him do things that in some cases he does a heck of a lot better than I do. When we talk about delegation all the time on the show, but having somebody specifically say, you know, my right hand, I love that, um, that someone that you can totally trust. Some people will say, have an ops person or an executive assistant or both really run everything else that you don't want to be doing. I think that should be your absolute first hire <laughs> is that person. Um, and and uh, maybe simultaneously you know, head of marketing or sales, because that's that's exactly what we did and realized that as we were growing, 
I don't want to do all these other things because it keeps me from being able to speak, from podcasting, from uh, coaching. And quite honestly, that is my work sweet spot. I talk about it in the book and you know what your work sweet spot mm-hmm. is. It's very, very helpful to know that what isn't so that you can delegate it and and train someone else that can do it even better because that's what they're focused in on. I think a lot of advisors I talk to struggle with that. And only about uh, 25% of their day is focused in that sweet spot. So yeah, that comes out a lot. So let's talk about how you've done this well. So I really want to to bring this up. I know you're you're interviewing for other podcasts out there. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I think Kitsis has got you in his eye about the same similar topic. So let's let's dig into this a little bit. Um, what, or maybe you just tell me and tell the audience a little bit about what it took to find someone who really was a right hand. I think Cooper and I both, we, we evolved to become that. I think it was like a commitment. I, well, I, first I'm going to start with, I think a lot of us are cheap. A lot of advisors are just really afraid of investing in their uh, staff. Well, and partly because we're money people. Um, For me, I felt like I wanted to be the kind of firm that paid top tier for their people so that that was never going to be a reason they didn't, that they left. And so at a time in my life where everything was changing, my expenses were going up massively, my income was going down. There's a lot of bad things happening. And at that time, I made a commitment to the business and to my life to invest in this role. And I kind of think that's like the first thing that you have to really be, you have to see the clear outcome and start to imagine what it's like to have this person. What if they, what if you didn't look at email anymore? What would that be worth to you if some, if you didn't look at email anymore? You know, and, and then you do focus on like, not everybody in your office can probably coach, I would imagine. So you're going to be focused on the work only you can do. And same for me. I'm the one that meets with the clients. So I'm the one that does the CFPing stuff around here, right? So you just got to invest in your people. I think that was the first thing that I did. And I have consistently. In fact, you know, his, his salary has more than doubled in the last four years. Benefits are awesome. So I think that's important for people to recognize is that you need to invest and don't think of it as them necessarily. You're investing in your business by investing in good people. And um, I let there be mistakes. And we're not always that great at that. But I can think of plenty of mistakes that I've made in my career. And why shouldn't my staff be allowed that same grace. So I also believe that that's super important. Um, I use them as coaching and teaching opportunities. And uh, and I certainly made some mistakes along the way. And he used those as coaching and teaching opportunities. So I think allowing there to be mistakes created an environment where growing and learning and changing was okay. So he's evolved and I've evolved. And I think that's been a key part of our success. That kind of culture of being able to make mistakes and learn from them is a culture that is kind of contrary, I think, to this industry. (laughs) Isn't it? Yeah. There's so many uh, advisors and financial professionals in general, right? Accounting, um, legal, like it just seems like there's fees, there's lawsuits. They're so quick to jump. Like I'm just talking industry wide, very generalized here, where this idea of allowing people to make mistakes, learn from them and grow without instant repercussion. That's very refreshing, quite honestly. And I love that culture that you have. And I, I would say most of the good business books I've ever read talk about having that kind of a culture and having, quite honestly, a culture that if somebody does leave and find something better or have a different opportunity, that they still hang out with you or want to <laughs> want to see how life is going and how business is and that you've had a good break, right? So I think that's, that's super important as we're talking about this you know, idea of having a right-hand person. 
Um, where would you say that maybe your biggest struggle with balanced growth uh, is coming for you? Well, when I, oh gosh, you know, my, my biggest headache is right now. So many inputs. And I think it it's associated a little bit with uh, when I, I, I have this, this word, I use the word frantic. Whenever I feel frantic, like I'm frantically trying to accomplish or check something off my to-do list, usually I'm avoiding something. And so I'm, I'm very conscious of that because right now, like I have five stickies on my desk. I'm really trying to get my emails down. I'm trying to get my Hubly down. And I'm just like, oh, I can't get, I can't get things to a state of completion, right? But that's an illusion. Completion is the illusion. So that's one of the things like this moment in time that is blocking me, I think, where I don't feel very balanced, where I just maybe I've overcommitted in a couple areas. One is in the nonprofit space. I'm doing a couple community projects. I'm excited and inspired by them, but I must say they're very time consuming. Um, one of the other struggles I think we've had is how to scale special because I have very intimate relationships with my clients and I don't want to lose that. So the idea of bringing in another advisor to me was just like, no, like, how would I do that? Uh, so Cooper has really come in and he knows a lot about the client's story. So he helps kind of manage the client relationship with me. So that has been a big help, but we're working on some technology to help us scale the special. And so we've done that through, you know, we've adopted Hubly and we use OneNote, we use a couple of different tools. And then a new thing we're calling the client journey, this master client journey. So we don't have a proof of concept. We don't know if it's actually going to change this, but we but we think, and my hypothesis is that employing these couple of things should allow us to do a better job of scaling that special and intimate experience that we have with, with our clients or intimate knowledge, I should say, that we have with our clients. Now, you have relationships with your clients that uh, are very intimate, right? You talk about some of the things that they don't want to talk with any other human being in the world, <laughs> their right. money and their goals, and even their spouse. Sometimes they really struggle with this. And I've done a lot of research in this area with Dr. Jeff Dew at Utah State, and we've uh, done some research in my dissertation on this. But what I found yeah. is that they really do rely not just on a trusting relationship, but they almost, if I was to ask them, what a really great, you know, um, relationship they have with their planner advisor, they would say that, that you're the right hand, <laughs> you know, that yes. kind of flip this around that I know you're, you're the right hand, you're doing all the things that they don't know how or don't know what to do, um, et cetera. So I think what you have done is you've, you've created that relationship with your own employee to help grow and scale while trying to keep that same relationship with your clients. Cause you want that. I've found that a lot of advisors and accountants, estate planning attorneys, like the professionals, your COIs, they struggle with this very same thing because it's such an intimate relationship with their taxes, their, you know, their estate planning, all the legal stuff, their financial pieces, their insurance. They don't want anybody else to know. Um, but I think sometimes that might create a little bit of fear of growing, right? A fear of expanding because they think if I grow, I'll have to let go. <laughs> yes. If if I become too big, they won't have access to me instead of what you're doing. And that is, no, I'm going to create some automation. I'm going to create some tools, technology, so that I can still have my balance. And yet yes. I can still eat my, you know, have my cake and eat it too, essentially, and still build. I think this is a really good piece to, you know, kind of, put your stamp of approval on and know that, yes, you know, we're, we're fixing some things where you're being innovative, right? And that's the process of being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, that you're innovating, you're driving more excellence. So I, I commend you. If you were to give some advice to other advisors uh, or other financial professionals in the, in the industry, really the financial industry more broadly, 
um, about having better balanced growth. What, what would you maybe say to them? You know, my the first thing that comes to my mind is to create space. You know, if you're feeling if you're feeling frantic, the solution for me, and I think I was coached to do this at some point. I don't think I came up with this myself. If the presence of fear or frantic behavior, if there was the presence of fear or frantic behavior or like worry that I was to stop, just stop doing everything that I'm doing and create some space to kind of clear the decks and really start fresh and see if you can reassess what the priorities are. And sometimes clear the decks means if you've got 10 projects that are active, kill eight of them and bring it down to two. If you're onboarding five clients like we were earlier this year, which was a lot for us to do in the first couple quarters, you know, maybe you turn on the waiting list. Like sometimes that sense of of uh, scarcity, um, or scarcity is probably not the right word, but like it's okay to just stop. Like the world won't end. So that would be my advice. If you are feeling the fear, the presence of fear or frantic behavior or worry take a break and create some space in your life so that you have time to think. That to me is my most absolute precious commodity is, I don't even know if that's a commodity, that might be wrong, but it's time to think. I actually put that in my business plan. Like that is the goal, like creating time to think. Like what would it be like if before every every meeting that you had throughout the day, you had time to think? That would be crazy. It'd be it, amazing. No, it's so good. Um, <laughs> recently had this conversation that we posted um, to our podcast about mindfulness and you know how important this is to be able to say, yeah, let's let's just stop. Let's be present. And you know, George Kinder is the master of mindfulness. He teaches these um, courses and and really helps advisors get to a deeper level of, of mindfulness and awareness. But that idea of being present and the idea of stopping, <laughs> you're overloaded. I love that idea. If you're feeling frantic, just stop. Psychologists, when you know they talk about uh, the fight or flight syndrome now, they kind of add freeze, where that might actually be an un, you know, a, psych, a subconscious level desire to just kind of freeze and not know what to do. But you're saying do this on purpose when you notice <laughs> you're getting overloaded so that the body doesn't have to do this itself, right? It's sort of a proactive mechanism. How has that helped you um, to, to be balanced and to, and to grow? How, how do you think that's really helped you to move forward, to have that space to just think? Well, I think that my obsession with productivity for largely like the entirety of my life, like my obsession with checklists um, led me to live in a way that I was checked out. I, I missed my kids' programs, like when they were little, little like toddlers at daycare and early school. I missed stuff because I was so busy checking the list off that I was checked out. I was just checked out and I don't want to live there. I don't want to live there. So to me, um, the the space is what I crave is because before I was afraid of the space because of what might come up. You know what I mean? Whether it's personal or professional, if you create space and time to think, something might show up that you don't want to see or deal with or talk about. But the thing is, that's exactly the thing or thing you might need to see or deal with or talk about. So I've also had a lot, quite a few years of really excellent therapy, which I think can also help with things like balance and growth and change. Um, but I think that's how it helped me is because I can't be afraid of the space. And before I was. Living life without <laughs> fear. It feels great, doesn't it? It does. Doing my best. Doing good for you. I appreciate your opportunity to share what you know, what's working well with your right hand and some excellent advice that other advisors I know are going to eat this up and they love it. And if not, um, they probably just need to hear it again. They've heard it before. <laughs> it isn't the first time, right? They've, they've heard some things that really 
are very beneficial to hear over and over again. So thank you for your time on the show. Thank you for your originality and for your uh, just willingness to share. Thank you, Travis. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Guys and gals, if you love this, like, share, subscribe. Um, you know, you're welcome to comment on the podcast when it goes live on our show. Uh, as always, let us know if we can be doing anything better here. You can always email me at Travis at MakeTimeInstitute.com. Tell us if there's someone else we need to be having on the show um, or other you know, ideas that you might have to help improve. We're here to help talk about this taboo topic of balance. And again, thank you, big efforts, Tanya, for being here and everyone else for listening. Um, So long till our next episode. And remember, live life on purpose.